So what's going on guys? My name is Violent. Welcome to Grizz Zombies. Today, we're going to be talking about Call of Duty World War II Zombies and the Lang Anna. I know you don't know what that means, but it deals with DLC 1. We will be talking about the history of the North Sea as it relates to the Battle of the Atlantic. So if you go on to learn anything, drop a like on this video and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section if you're new. And if anything, anything sparks an idea with DLC 1, hit me up over on Twitter, at Grizz Violent. It's the best place to keep talking zombies. So where we'll begin today is in the projector room of the morgue. So make your way over to there and you will find these picture frames on the walls. This is what we're going to be taking a look at because these are specifically images for the North Sea. The reason we know this is because there's a tourist attraction that's famous and there's a picture of this on the wall. It's easy enough to target that location, get an actual physical image of what it looks like, and realize that it's the same image they showed us with an X marked in the Resistance DLC 1 map pack. So, this is how we know it's relating, but something weird is happening behind the scenes. And I'm going to show you this as an exclusive here on my channel, it's based on some research that I've done that I haven't quite told anybody. The deer on the wall might represent that we're dealing with hunters. Now, the Crusades is what I think this season pass is all about. The image that you're seeing right there is that same image that I also located in the headquarters. You might know this area. This is the home of Major Hank Rodeu, who might possibly be a future vendor coming up for zombies. All you can do now is switch over to the zombies menu if you're located in headquarters. But beyond all the books, Major Hank, Hank Rodeu's journal there, there is this one stack of books, and on top, the Crusades book is there, okay? It reads, The Crusades of the Teutonic Knights. So, who is studying this book? Is it Major Hank Rodeu, who is the guy giving us our orders to secure the Hilt, which is the hardcore version of the Easter Egg? We've done that and collected the Ravenhurst, which has the power of resurrection. Now, it seems that we need to talk a little more in depth about what this picture actually is, okay? This is the Lang Anna, and I'm going to go through the next minute here, sort of giving you exact details as to what the real life picture actually looks like okay this is the second image and this is the back side the pillar you're seeing that's separated from the mountain is actually made of sandstone and this is 154 feet high the water levels were higher at some points you can see the erosion on the stone itself now climbing the stack is not allowed but tourists can look at the rock from a distance it is important to note that the hint that we're receiving is a picture of a tourist site so that's how we figured out in the Final Reich what DLC 1's location is actually going to be. So cross-referencing this with the image we got from DLC 1 Resistance, I think it's safe to say that we have something solid. We already know that Sledgehammer traveled to these locations, so this would appear as a downgraded version of an image they took while they were there. So before we learn the history of the North Sea in World War II, I think it's important that we talk about the Battle of the Atlantic and what that was because that oversaw what was going on in World War II at the time. So as severe as the Allied losses were, they were much worse for the U-boat force. Of 1,100 German submarines produced during the war, nearly 800 were lost to Allied action. Just reading that tells you how many people died, but there were only 300 actual ships left, submarines left, that the Germans had after that. Back to the facts, 28,000 of 48,000 U-boat sailors were killed in the Battle of the Atlantic. That's a lot. Statistically, the jobs of the German submarine sailor was the deadliest of the entire war. Destroyer escorts were responsible for many of these U-boat losses on the German end, and they were instrumental to the Allied success in Europe during World War II. Now, when you're thinking of a submarine sailor, they, they really have it bad because you're just relying on radar to protect you. Otherwise, you're in a concealed box underwater just waiting to get shot. But this is the situation that our map's going to be in for DLC 1, fellas. It's going to be about the Battle of the Atlantic, and 800 ships of the German army submarines were actually destroyed to Allied action. 28,000 of 48,000 boat sailors were killed during the Battle of the Atlantic, so a lot of life. So before we talk about the area where our map's going to be taking place, called Heligoland, we're going to talk about the history of the North Sea. Now the North Sea was often an area of conflict and is extreme history of maritime conference and trade routes between the coastal nations whose economies and industries were also able to exploit 
its resources. Now, this is a good and a bad thing, but after the war, the North Sea lost much of its military significance because it is bordered only by NATO member status. However, it gained significant economic importance in the 1960s as the states and North Sea coast began full-scale exploitation of its oil and gas resources. Now, as you guys know, this is a problem that led into the future of what we're seeing today of natural resources being a big source of war. So I, wanna, I won't get too much into that because that shit's just fucked up what we're seeing now with North Korea. God damn it! But the Heligoland Island is located on the southeastern corner of the North Sea. It's the only German island not in the immediate vicinity of the mainland, so it's a perfect spot where Hitler decided we're going to have a submarine base. This is where we're going to hide our submarine German power. But if the idea of are the characters returning crossed your mind, this should answer it. Cameron Dayton responded to Jay Rizzo of an analysis he made in a video. He said, don't worry, we will be exploring Jefferson, Olivia, and Drosten more in depth. The story is far from over. Things are about to get dark. They're going to get dark. So, our characters will be returning. We will not be playing as a new set of characters. So I hope that answers and brings you guys some clarity to that question. So let's talk about the order of events that occurred, right? We beat the Panzer Mordor, we took him down, we also took the Blimp down in the same process, and now we're left in the city of Middleburg. Now we know there's boats alongside the dock, we've seen that on the map itself, so they could have easily hopped in a boat, I guess, and paddled away. Is that the answer to how they got to this new island? Based on the research we got of the Heligoland Island, I would say we're approaching a submarine base. That's what I would label this map as currently, if things change, I will be able to update you on the channel. So that's why you should subscribe to stay up to date. But right now, what we're seeing, 100% for certain, based on the pictures we're seeing in this room, is an island matching the Lang Anna. And Cameron Dayton, who's the creative director at Sledgehammer Games, did hint that we should be looking up German research on what happened in the North Sea. And this is what we know so far, it was the Battle of the Atlantic. It's going to take place between 1943 and 1945, which is at the end of the war, which the entire season pass is focused on. I will definitely be doing more research on the specifics within the books and titles and the images that we can't see right now, just by zooming in on. But I notice a poster up here. Look at this poster. When we beat the Panzer Mortar, we're awarded a helmet that we're seeing right there. That is the zombie's helmet that we get in headquarters. Why is that on this wall? I'm very curious because the Crusades book is also in headquarters in Major Hank Rodeo's office. Now it could be easy enough to say that this is just hinting at your reward that you're getting for beating the Panzer Mordor, but it's in the exact same room that we're seeing the Crusades, this mysterious book of the Teutonic Knights. Now I'm leaning towards that being a hint at the Raven Lords. And the reason that Hank Rodeu has this possibly in his office in the headquarters is because he's researching everything to lead us on this path as well. Maybe Marie has given or handed over this information to Major Hank Rodeu in hopes of creating this team that can help get her there. Now what we do know is that Hank Rodeu is marked as an interesting and remarkable man in both stature and presentation. But he's also got a quiet drive that has helped him through bureaucratic channels with impressive speed. So this is alarming in a sense that in the worst case scenario, he's working against us to wield this power for himself. That's of course always the answer to corruption, but who knows if that's what we're seeing in this or if he's actually here for the team. But we have to be cautious of that because by his description, it seems that he was just witty enough to move through the bureaucratic channels very fast. And most people do that when they have a very very good tongue when it comes to language. One thing I'm curious to see is if any new information ever comes to Major Hank Rodeu's office in the headquarters. Will that be updated too with DLC 2 hints once DLC 1 is out? But with the game of Call of Duty World War II Zombies being out a month, Sledgehammer's finally addressed the prestige issue over on Twitter. They've talked about it. They said they're working hard to try to fix the current issues with high rounds and prestiging. They don't say anything about zombie supply drops, but earlier they did tweet out that they already addressed it. So I'm hoping because they mentioned issues 
with prestiging, that they're talking about more than one issue with prestiging, because that's why we can't accept zombie supply drops. It's because we prestige, so it is technically a prestiging issue. So I hope they're get actually addressing that, and we're on the horizon of something great. But that's going to do it for this news update on DLC 1 and the North Sea. Be sure to subscribe, activate that bell icon so you can stay up to date with all my information and polls coming up. Be sure to vote on those polls, it's very important. And I'll see you in the next one. Violent out. <laughs>